Hi, I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion, and today I'm going to be offering my tips and tricks to sewing with brocade. Brocade is an elegant woven fabric that can have beautiful designs embossed or embroidered in. It can give your garments a high-end look and be used in formal wear. Like many beautiful fabrics, brocade can be a little bit tricky to work with, but hopefully after our tips, it won't be impossible. Let's go ahead and get started. Brocade is considered more of a formal fabric, but you can use it in jackets, dresses, skirts, and tops. You just have to pay attention to the care instructions when you purchase the fabric. For example, this one is a polyester nylon, and according to the care instructions, I can hand wash it in cold water, but I can't throw it in the dryer, and I have to use a cool iron on the reverse side because I don't want to damage the fabric. It really depends from brocade to brocade. So some of them can also be dry clean only. So you wanna make sure that when you get it, you know exactly how you can care for it. Also, because you can't really use a hot iron on it, you wanna pay attention to how you store this fabric before you use it. Because if you get any really deep creases or fold lines in the fabric, you might not be able to get it out. So you may wanna roll the fabric instead of folding it. Because some brocade can be kind of slippery to work with, one way to cut it out is to lay the fabric down in a single layer and laying out your pieces individually and using a rotary mat and rotary cutter. So I'm placing my pieces where I need them to be, using fabric weights to hold it into place, and then using a cutter to cut around it. Because it kind of just slips around, sometimes if you pin it and then you cut it with regular scissors, it can kind of move on you and so it doesn't exactly get cut straight. But if you have it laying flat and you're using a cutter to go around it, your pieces may be more accurate. Now, if you do wanna use pins, straight pins, what you can use are silk or pleating pins. They're really sharp and you can pin around the perimeter, but just make sure that you're pinning inside the seam allowance. So I'm not pinning inside the body of the pattern, but more on the outside edge as far as I can get. And then after you pin it, you can use scissors and carefully cut around the whole piece. One reason people don't really like working with brocade is because it frays so much. You just breathe on it and it starts fraying and as you work with it more, it frays and frays and frays. So one way to stop this is as soon as you finish cutting out your piece individually, you can go ahead and remove the tissue paper, take it to your sewing machine. If you have a serger, you can serge around all edges. You're not sewing anything together. All you're doing is finishing the edges. If you don't have a serger, you can also do this on your sewing machine. If you're finishing the edges on your sewing machine, you can use some of these type of stitches. So we have an overlock stitch, overcast stitch, or you can also use one of the zigzag stitches, a three-step zigzag or a regular zigzag stitch. I'm doing an overcast stitch and you can see I'm using kind of a different foot. This came with my machine for the overcast stitch. You may not have this for yours. And even if you're doing just a regular zigzag stitch, you just want to make sure that you do it right on the edge of your fabric. Here's that same fabric piece with the finished edges. Now it is time consuming to do this for all your pieces, but it'll really cut down on the annoyance later because it won't fray as much. You'll still get a little bit of fraying, but it definitely should cut down on it. When it comes to marking your fabric, you're probably better off going with tailor tacks instead of using the traditional fabric markers and chalk. Normally because a lot of brocades are really busy looking, so it's really gonna be hard to see those marks. And if you use something that's water soluble, it could be hard to get rid of it because you really shouldn't be using water on brocades if that's what the care instructions say. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration on how to do a tailor's tax, but we also have a dedicated tutorial if you wanna see a more in-depth explanation. Basically, I'm gonna, let's say I'm gonna mark out this little dot right here for the bottom of my dart. I have some contrasting thread on a needle and I brought the two ends together. I'm just gonna do a little stitch and you can see I still have my pattern on my fabric here. And I'll show you how we do this. So I'm gonna pull my thread through, but I'm not gonna pull it all the way through. I'm just gonna leave a little bit hanging off like that. 
Then I'm going to do another stitch. So I'm going back to where I started and coming out basically at the same point. And again, I'm not pulling it all the way through. You're just going to leave a little loop like this. So I'm going to grab my scissors, cut this. I'm going to cut this loop in half so it's split apart. And if you want to trim this down, you could trim it down a little bit. So I'm leaving a maybe about a half inch on each side. Get rid of this. So now this center is marking where I have a mark right here. And I can very carefully lift off my pattern. And there you go. So now it's marked in my fabric in the exact position I need it to be. When it comes to interfacing, typically you're not going to want to use a fusible interfacing since most brocades can't handle a really hot iron. So you're going to want to use sewing interfacing or you can use other types of fabric like an organza or a batiste. So if this was my piece that needs to be interfaced, I would cut a duplicate out of my sewing interfacing, place it on the wrong side, and then I would do a basting stitch all around the perimeter of the piece to hold it into place. When it comes to sewing on my fabric, I'm just using an all-purpose thread. You can also use silk thread. As far as my needle is concerned, you can use a universal or use a sharp needle. The size I'm using is 80-20. And if you're dealing with fabric that's really slippery, one trick that you can do is you can use tissue paper to kind of help things have a little bit more stability and keep it from not going underneath your foot as smoothly as it should. So you could just sew right through it. And I'm just using regular gift tissue paper and you can have it just on the top or you can sandwich the fabric and have it on the bottom too. When you finish doing your seam, you just strip off the tissue paper like it was never there. When you finish doing a seam and you want to press it, you have to look at your care instructions. You may only be able to use a cool iron or a low setting iron, but you wanna use a press cloth to protect your fabric and you wanna do it on the wrong side. You wanna also be careful when you're dealing with this type of fabric, especially when you're sewing with it. If we take a look at the right side of my fabric, it kinda of looks like there's some embroidery, like this light or dark blue fabric is kind of laid on top of the light blue fabric. And so it could snag pretty easily, which is why if I'm sewing on the right side, I never use a walking foot, cause then it just catches it and it just snags. So you wanna treat it very respectfully. If you finish all the edges of your fabric pieces, by the time you do the seams, you're already going to have a finished edge. But if you want something extra special, you can do something like I did on this side. Now this is the Hong Kong finish, and you can do it for seams and you can also do it for hems. We'll put a link on how you can learn how to do it in more in depth. Now if you have your own tips and tricks in working with brocade, leave us a comment. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.